about the gang back home. Maybe I wasn't listening via Barry Levinson's Avalon. Life, so we hear, is a journey, not a race. But we all finished out of the money anyway. My mother's father dies six months after I am born. Allegedly, hold that word, he looks at me and, pre-entombed in his own eternal silence, nods to suggest approval. How to disapprove of a baby unless its future is visible to the doomed? Maybe he had the call. Maybe I was the family basilisk. I am born in my parents' middle age. They are both liars. They say they are Jews, but rage and adultery are their faiths, and their only God is their thwartedness, the better to curse it. I am an only child. Maybe this is good. One misused child is a dysfunctional family. More than one is a state-subsidized madhouse. But endless older cousins surround me, aunts and uncles, substitute Zaydas and Bubas. I remember the smells of cooking in Aunt Esther's kitchen on Marion Avenue. My mother's oldest sister, first of six, owns a brass samovar, bakes a Friday challah I can smell to this day, owns a huge Philco record player where I listen to Rodzinski conduct the Cleveland in Tchaikovsky's fifth. But they do not talk, not in front of Kenny nor in front of Inez, or Toby, or Bernard, or any of my other cousins. Sha! Yish! No, they might learn it. Go outside. Maybe there were legends told, stories repeated down the years. Maybe I missed them, if only because there was nobody to tell them to me, and everything I've woven about me, this included, is a cloak of fables and lies. The poet is born in the land of liars. Maybe I missed them because I wasn't paying attention, because I'd learned the art of self-pity early and shut out everything else. The family circle meetings, shots of J&B, a.k.a. Jewish booze, oiling the conversation until it got nasty. There were the brothers, Julius and Morty, sons of my mother's second sister, Rose, and her husband, Aaron. Brothers who would not speak for ten years, self-inflicted victims of a business deal gone bad. Legend. Rose, as a girl, age three, still in Russia, pulled off the street by a neighbor because it was Good Friday, and the Cossacks were having their annual pogrom. Truth. Half awake in Rose's sewing room, I hear the adults talk. It is 1953. It is all about a family in the neighborhood, Rosenberg. They are in all the papers, dead or going to die. And the children, they weep over the poor little orphans. And I start crying because they are children without even bad parents. And a wonder... My father is furious, but not at me. Recall Miller's salesman. Nobody ever told the truth for one second in this house. Not always, but you had to hear it by accident. Aunt Esther stops cooking, gets confused and lost on subways. Yasha, her husband, she married him in 1907, is dead. She is dying in a five towns nursing home where her oldest child, her firstborn son, pays the bills but never comes, and every male, from me to the Puerto Rican busboy, gets the same question. This do Al? That is supposed to break your heart. It breaks mine now. If I'd been awake then, mine might have been broken. Or maybe it did because that was 1962. And I remember it to this day. But what did I not hear?